Right, so some actual mainstream news I can actually get behind and celebrate and call not into question for once because coffin dodging dust farter and the most pernicious and malign influence in our public discourse for the last getting on for 60 years since he bought the news of the world back in 1969 Rupert Murdoch has finally decided the time is right to move on to new things at the age of 92. I can only presume to spend more time in his crypt. Perhaps he's had an interior decorator in to do the place up a bit, possibly on the recommendation of Peter Mandelson. You can fill in the gap there with what you'd quite like to see him moving on to, I dare say. Some suggestions will crop up in the comments, but keep it clean and keep it polite, please. It's a reason to celebrate, though, because this guy has been a pervasive influence on our politics for too long. He literally makes or breaks future leaders, and not just here, but all over the world, securing the future for the elite, so his departure from the reins of News Corp and Fox News might leave us with a chance of starting to perhaps undo some of the damage done by a guy that has proven to be an absolute scourge on humanity. Aside from ensuring every politician since Margaret Thatcher here in this country was basically chosen by him, right up to his most recent summer party attended by both Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, as both were courting his favour, it shows who's really in charge around here, doesn't it? He's been responsible for so much damage, it's silly. He heavily promoted Donald Trump in the US for the presidency there, was regularly on the phone to Trump, Fox News going to extreme lengths to dismiss talks of his guilt regarding insurrection and very much promoting the narrative that the election was indeed stolen from him, thanks to those pesky voting machines and their Democrat programming. That, of course, led to a lawsuit with Dominion Systems, which got settled just before the court case began for some 700 odd million dollars. I mean, that's a drop in the ocean to a multi-billionaire like Murdoch, though. In his native Australia, he's just as bad. In the last 21 Australian federal and state elections, just as he's done in this country here, with all of our general elections since 1979, Murdoch has acted as a massive campaigning presence for conservative politicians, taking control of the news narratives and the political agendas and shaping them and pushing relentlessly the views and opinions in a positive light of the right wing and even the far right. Murdoch is right-wing himself, combined with having control of so many news outlets. It's literally how he began his career, buying up smaller publications and growing an empire, that he now completely swamps his competitors, drowns them out, and thus come headlines in the scum saying it was the sun what won it each and every election here. And the same happens abroad. And so when you have someone with so much malign global influence, with his inherently ideological bias towards the right, it's so little wonder not just this country, but many countries around the world are in the states they're in. It's not so much of an exaggeration to call him one of the most dangerous men alive. He is a threat to democracy through and through. This is a man of exorbitant wealth, of extreme influence and power, and yet uses it all to make the world a worse place for all of the rest of us to live in. He is a black hole where hope went to die. The Iraq war, for example, probably wouldn't have happened if not for Murdoch. The US invasion in 2003, it was called by the New York Times as Mr. Murdoch's war because he'd been the one calling for it through his publications in the run up to the invasion, replete with commentary when the invasion began and continued about US soldiers being liberators and of course all those weapons of mass destruction. The Republican Party in the US is as beholden to him as the Tory party in this country are, including Red Tories. So it's a little wonder the meeting of minds of George Bush and Tony Blair happened as it did. Murdoch even ending up godfather to one of Blair's kids. In fact, it is alleged by Blair's spin doctor Alistair Campbell in his diaries that Blair finally entered the fray when Murdoch rang him on a private line, no going through the Downing Street switchboard for him, assuring him of his support if Blair joined the US invasion, which obviously he did. All the Blair telling Bush, I'm with you to the end of business, apparently began with a setup by Murdoch, though the talking nutsack has always denied this. At the time of the Iraq war happening, can you imagine how many newspaper titles Murdoch's empire had actually racked up? Have a guess, how many rags globally did he own at that point? 30? 50? He owned 175 titles at that point, and every single one of them was pumping out pro-Iraq war narratives. Awfully big coincidence that they all followed the same line, isn't it? 175 of them all over the world! That can't possibly have had anything to do with diktat from the top, could it? It was good for ratings, though. Never mind if millions of Iraqis died, along with soldiers on all sides, eh? He sold papers. 
He did the same thing with Brexit. The economic damage we're all living with here and now today. But if you're the sort or know someone who's still buying Murdoch's hate rags here, then you're helping to fund the guy who helped engineer that too. It's no secret Murdoch didn't like the EU. He didn't have the influence with them that he enjoyed elsewhere. He didn't like European policies. And he actually told the Prime Minister at one point that if he couldn't change European policies, that his papers wouldn't be supporting his Tory party. Now, that was a conversation made, um, Murdoch had with John Major back in 1997. And, of course, Murdoch then went on to support Tony Blair instead, of course. But Major later said, years later, given what happened since and in context of that conversation he had, was that Murdoch wanted a referendum on the UK leaving the EU. And this was borne out by 2016 when the Scum newspaper ended up spending some £96,000 on a pro-Brexit poster. And News Group UK, the Murdoch UK media parent group, registered themselves with the Electoral Commission as an official Leave EU campaign group. Murdoch literally turned his publications into a pro-Brexit lobbying group. And if that isn't a prime example of the media making the news and not just reporting on it, I really don't know what does. But this is Murdoch all over. It's what he's done for decades. And we know he does this. We know he loves the power trip from it. We know he has politicians driven by self-serving ambition and greed seeking his blessing at all times. They can't get rid of Keir Starmer, his offices recently said, always writing in the hateful rags as he does here. So you see, the departure of Rupert Murdoch really is something that should be celebrated. But the news empire he's built is going to continue. His son Lachlan is taking over. However, with six kids to his name, handing the reins of power to just one, and it being the third born at that, might be putting the cat amongst the pigeons there. There has never been a more poison-filled entity to political and social discourse globally than Rupert Murdoch. His ability to railroad through civil, societal and political discussions by virtue of the size of his empire and how he uses it, by distorting what we see to be the facts away from what is the reality, warping opinion and thinking, divide us, dividing us all, telling us who to hate, and we end up living in a country no longer able to unite in our own best interests. If you're watching talk TV, if you're listening to talk radio, if you're still buying The Scum or The Times or The Sunday Times, then you are being influenced by this man on what to think. Because it isn't news. It's never been news. It's his propaganda. His entire empire is built on it. How likely that is to change very much depends on his heir. Though, by making himself Chairman Emeritus, he's not completely gone for good. And frankly, for as long as Rupert Murdoch is still drawing breath, that may not change. His is a legacy of gaming the political system, of distorting truth, or election rigging, or phone hacking. So while numerous other right-wing rags extol his non-existent virtues and call him a titan of a figure with decades of involvement in our media, the truth of the matter is he's left a legacy of a planet being on fire. And having lived as long as he has, he actually deserves to live a little bit longer and see what he built crumble. That I would love to see. But it won't happen for as long as people keep buying into the snake oil that he's still selling. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did more content out daily. And do have your say on these events in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where there's hope his empire finally falling could already be happening. As the profits for his media empire have well, they've recently dropped off a bit of a cliff. Perhaps that has prompted his departure. Who knows? And I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.